Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Mason Taylor here. Today's episode is brought to you by Superfeast, the online store, bringing you some medicinal mushroom magic to bring into your life, some tonic herbalism, some incredible Chinese uh, roots that are dedicated to developing your chi and getting your blood circulation going. It's pretty much online store that's there for you that if you're living your life, you know, whether whether you're living in an urban area or out in the sticks and you just, you don't quite yet have that ancient, very important part of the diet and strategy of herbalism, but more specifically wild herbs there in your life so you can ensure you are pulling in the incredible, like multi-dimensional level of benefits that come from foods that are wild rather than the domesticated crops that um, and herbs as well that, that we mostly have access to. And also, as always, we know how important it is for our health to have an immune system on the surface of our body, deep down in our bone marrow, the ability to circulate our immune system really effectively to move it around so we can deal with all those little critters, opportunistic organisms that are coming in trying to break us down, decompost us, take it back down to the earth. And when you know, we start getting onto some some of these herbs, some of these medicinal mushrooms, I'm thinking shaga mushroom, reishi mushroom, we start building that strong immune system again and we can really ward them off and uh, just increase that feeling of um, protection and safety within our own body. So that is superfeast.com.au. Today on the show, I have George Cavasilis. It's a really incredible interview, guys. It's, it's one I've been very, very excited to bring you. It's, um, before I, you know, it was like the first I, when I had the idea of beginning the show, I was like, I can't wait to have George on here. Now, George isn't someone who had generally you would expect on a, on a health show, but as you know by now, you've heard the first couple of episodes and you're starting to see that we're approaching health from not just that minimum, like that minimalistic point of view where you know, like health, health is you know just the food and the breath and you know creating some kind of strategy that just helps you kind of like bring energy in from the outside. No, we we know that it's way bigger than that. We know that health as a word is really limiting to that very expansive concept of what, that we're actually touching on and attempting to communicate with each other. And one of those aspects, you now I think you've, you've heard that now that I'm into tonic herbalism and part of tonic herbalism and the Taoist path is acknowledging that, you know, not just bringing more jing or essence or substance into our bones, into our organs, or that's a part of it, big foundation. It's not all about the chi and the blood and the circulation, but it's also about your spirit. You know, your, your connection more to, you know, like, so, you know, that, the, the mysterious, you know, the mystery, the mysteries of life, those real, those aspects of ourself that I wouldn't even call higher aspects of ourself, but those parts of us, they're more like when, when we're at home and we really feel like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's me, that loving self, you know, I'm compassionate. I can look at a tree and not just see it as a resource that I can use for my own good, but now I realize there's something living in there. And allows me to tread a little bit more carefully um, on the on the planet. Allows me to tread a lot more carefully within myself, and and ultimately enables you to really settle into yourself. You know, and and so you guys will definitely hear what I'm talking about when I open up to this interview with George. But I invited him on because um, I've been I've been friends with George for a while now, and just some of the conversations that I've had with him. Uh, the only way I can describe it, and the way it's been able to help me, is it's been. I, it's been, enabled me and empowered me to remember a lot. Now, this will make sense in the interview, you know, but um, I can I can remember a lot more now about about myself, about the planet, about the cosmic environment, and it's helped me bypass that that systemic stress that I'm holding when when I just like I'm like ah oh, I, I I I know there's this like beautiful aspect of myself there and I, I just can't taste it and feel it and and uh, with, with just a couple of distinctions, some very profound distinctions, uh, I've been able to really drop into that place, ease into that place within myself and so I um, I like I like George's approach because we're not we are kind of like trying to burst the bubble on anyone or anything 
coming in going, I'm going to come and give you the answer. The answer is coming from the outside of you. Follow this system and you'll, and you'll get the result. Don't worry about anything else. We are going to completely burst the bubble on that. You know, George is full power, man. <laughs> George is just full power on his mission to go out there and through empowering himself and having his own life experiences, cultivating the wisdom from those experiences, then sharing them so people can empower themselves. Going into this interview, have an open mind. You know, we, we touch on some pretty big concepts. So, we have some pretty big conversations. We go there. I mean, like, you know, I... I wouldn't have imagined that I'd put an interview like this out there even half a year ago, but it's very important information. It does touch on a very cosmic nature. And so we are actually going into, in, into this. We're looking at like our, the relationship we have not only with our planet and ourselves, but understanding the cosmic environment. You know, what, how do we, do we have a relationship with, with what's going on out there? And then through that, how can that ripple down and have effects just on our, our physical vitality and our, our state? state of health. So, please re- like, just sit down, kick back, enjoy, and I will see you on the other side of this interview. George Cavasilis is an author, mentor, public speaker, and radio show host, and regular guest on the Alternative Radio Circuit. The ethos of George Cavasilis and his business, Our Journey Home, is to inform humanity in a way that helps to catalyze and empowerment of the individual that comes from deep within. It is a reclaiming of one's spiritual sovereignty. And in the process, one also experiences self-empowerment in a way that is very graceful and very steadfast. It is a state of presence and a state of being within oneself, within our immediate environment and within our cosmic environment. George, welcome to the show. Mason, thank you so very, very much, Lee, for inviting me on. It's, it's truly an honor. It is my absolute pleasure. And look, I just want to invite you to add a little bit more in about yourself and your vision and the work that you do. Yeah, my vision uh, is to share my knowledge and wisdom with the wider community uh, globally, the global community. And yeah, I want to do that through uh, radio uh, interviews, through presentations, through workshops. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love the one on one mentoring as well, where we can really connect deeply with people and, and take that journey because it's all about the journey. And I really like journeying into people, I like people journeying into me and uh, there's another word for that's called integration and for me relationship integration with one another, with our ecosystem, with our environment, with our mother planet, for me these are essential, Uh, it's the foundation for our state of being in this reality. There are literally so many places that I want to go in this conversation with you. <laughs> and what, what I want to start with is um, just bringing in that context once, once again. Um, you know, here, like on, on the show here, we have conversations around health, but we kind of blow it a little wider open and, um, and go past the reductionism that exists a, a lot within the health realm. Like health is over here and spirituality is over here, movement, it's, it's all fractured. And we were really intent on bringing further unification um, through these conversations. So, in, in, in and around that context, I'm sure you can acknowledge that, you know, you've really, you've really taken on like the big questions in life and not just gone on the journey to like, answer them via, via research, but you've gone and you've had experiences, cosmic experiences that have really enabled you to um, ground into yourself and, um, and have somewhat of, I'll come back to that word, experience of what's going on on the bigger picture here in the universe and our journey through this universe that will have relevance to our state of health wherever we are at in our lives, whether it's physical, mental health, spiritual health, whatever that is. So, I'd like to invite you to share about some of the experiences that you've had that have have enabled you to really experience that embodiment and that health within yourself. Yeah, thank thank you, Mason. The biggest realization that I would say I've had is the infinite nature of my being. That's the big one. And through that 
reintegration through my soul and through to the infinite nature of my beingness, I was once again able to remember, and this is this is a key element here, who I'm actually incarnate upon. So I'm going to say that again because this is so important to our state of health, uh, our mental health, our spiritual health, and of course our physical health and our emotional health. So. For good health, the remembrance of our immediate cosmic environment is crucial. I, I cannot understate that enough. And who, the remembrance of who it is we are incarnated upon. Because everybody will say, yeah, it feels like a feminine being. Uh, the planet is a living, sentient being. feels feminine, but... Who is this woman? And the key element to that is also that means I'm having a very deep and intimate relationship with this feminine being because I'm on her body. She's given me permission to be on her body. So therefore, because I'm not the kind of being that wants to impose. So you need to ask yourself that question too. Are you a being of imposition? Do you go around imposing yourself in your daily emanations? Or are you a being of respect and honour and uh, approach uh, life with integrity? Do you approach life with respect for all life and beings that you interact with around you, within you and without you? So... For me to be incarnate on this woman's planetary body means I have a very deep and intimate relationship and a very deep level agreement, a soul level agreement with her to actually be incarnated upon her body. And she's giving me the air that I breathe. She's giving me the waters that I drink as well, the food that I eat. So... The foundation for my existence here in this reality is that very relationship with my mother planet. Wow. There's a couple of ways I could take this, but primarily what, what comes up for me that I want to inquire about is firstly, what since you've come to that realization and that remembrance about what you were just explaining, what shifted for you in your mental health, emotional health and your physical health? What was kind of like before and after? Before there was distortion and disharmony in the way I thought, the way I felt, the way I went about doing my business, the way I was interacting with people, there was far more of an imposition because I was coming from a place of insecurity and the insecure ego wants to control, needs to be dominant, uh, have all those kind of qualities and characteristics. Now it's more the realisation that it's all about relationships. It's all about integration, it's all about harmony, and it's all about being able to tap into and integrate with and be one with the natural unfoldment because there's two different laws that exist in the universe. There's LAW law, which is a synthetic construct, which is imposing itself over the natural law, the natural order of life, and the natural law is spelt L-O-R-E. So once we understand the distinction between the two, then natural law, which is a very, very important part of understanding the integrative process and relationship we have with all life around us. So when, for example, we are going to uh, consume a herbal tonic, well, it's really important to understand the beings that are those herbs and that each one of them lives in a kingdom. And within those kingdoms, there's civilizations, there's hierarchies, there's, there's cultures. And like, I know I may be going to the territory of Wu for some people. However, once one enters in, back into that relationship, and this is the true essence of shamanism, okay? I'm sharing with you the true essence of shamanism. It is the conscious and heartfelt and soul level integration with all life. 
So we begin to experience all these kingdoms, the mineral kingdom, the flora kingdom, the fauna kingdom, the aquatic kingdoms. It all just opens up and all of a sudden we are back in awakened and, and an aware relationship, an integrative process that we are experiencing one another, we are working with one another, we are co-creating with one another. So when one consumes a herbal tonic, to understand who it is you're entering into an integrative process with. So what is the spirit of the, any particular herb? Because each herb is a living being. It has its own personality, its own qualities, its own characteristics. And I know you know this intimately, Mason, because we've had the most sensational um, exchanges in, in life together. And, you know, to be able to share this with your wider community and to be able to voice what I know that you personally experience as well on a regular basis, it is at the way we are now experiencing this reality in this world completely changes. And the way you integrate with a herbal tonic, for example, is amplified beyond measure. It, it is incredible how much more of an effect a herbal tonic will have because all of a sudden it's so happy the spirit of the herb, of the being that you're integrating with is so happy. And there's on beyond the physical, there's an alignment that takes place with the energetic vibrational pattern and the light energy of the spirit of the being of that herb. And when you actually take it, it aligns the, the mitochondria, it aligns the cells, and your body goes into a resonant pattern with the actual tonic. So all of a sudden, the effect, the, the way your body absorbs that, because there, there's, there's joy, there's happiness, there's alignment, there's resonance, and your body's not just going to get rid of it because the, the tonic isn't going to want to stay in a joyful environment and work with you. So you're entering into a co-creative process with the being who is that, that herb. Full power, man. Look, there's, <laughs> there's... <laughs> Maybe we should just give that a moment to settle in for everybody. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you all got that. There was one thing you said that really, really reiterated um, a distinction and a bit of information that I was able to tap in within myself that really allowed me to dissolve the stress that I was carrying around with me day in and day out, moment by moment. And w when you just said the word that you remember that you're having a relationship with the planet that you've incarnated on. And it's a relationship with the food you're eating. It's a relationship with the air that you're breathing. I, I like that because as you said, you know, you, as you know, I'm not adverse to the, the woo woo conversations and even the super woo conversations. However, I like to bring it back and make it really relatable on all mm -hmm. aspects of myself, including my physical self so I can feel it. So it's not just some like, well, that's the spiritual stuff over there and I'm not ready for that. But no, I want to bring back that unification of all those areas. So when I, when I do approach and when I, and when I hear you say to approach that, like you are, you are absolutely having that relationship with the planet and everything and everything else that we're doing. I don't know what it is. It's one of those ones that's slippery for the mind, but all of a sudden it's like my, when I was not acknowledging the being, the living being of the planet, or the plants, my system and my nervous system was immediately stressed out because that is yeah. a distortion of reality, right? Yes. And I'm so, I'm, I'm really, look, I, I just want to say, like, I'm really grateful for you kind of having the guts to get out there and talk about this stuff, um, especially, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's tough conversations for some people, but at the same time, I know for this community and for myself, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm ready to just acknowledge everything that it's going to take to really activate that enchantment within my own life and that vitality within my own life. And this actually, you know, we, I talk about one of the uh, values that I really hold personally and through this podcast, being enchantment, bring enchantment back into your life. This stops making enchantment lofty for me. This mm. makes enchantment a reality for me. Yeah. And so I want to acknowledge that within you. And then I will go to a question now, which is you, you tap, you, you touched on the, the other dimensions in which the beings within say the plants or the herbs or the air exist upon 
this brings me to something you bring up every now and then about we are having a relationship with one aspect of, say, Mother Earth within <clears throat> a particular dimension and she exists within other dimensions. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you, how far do you want me to go with that? Or do you want me to discuss the distortion as well? I wouldn't mind, yeah, if you tap into the distortion, if it has relevance, okay. if it has relevance to the people listening to be able to practically apply these distinctions and this information to their life and generate greater health and vitality, absolutely. Yeah, well, it has complete relevance. Um, we, we, we really do need to have an expanded awareness about life and reality beyond all the known paradigms, being science, religion, new age, occultism, even versions of shamanism, the whole lot. They're all, to me, they're all just religions and they're just one mind paradigm after another. And people keep getting locked into these paradigms or they, they venture from one to the, to the other uh, when they kind of get bored with one and frustrated with one. They simply pop over to another one. And what I'm sharing with you is my experience of, and this is my experience, my perception, um, everybody's going to have their own take on this, and I'm sharing with you what I've experienced in this, this journey, in this life, of other realities beyond all those paradigms. So before you made that comment of it's slippery for the mind, and that, I love that you brought that up because what I'm actually sharing with you is beyond all constructs of mind because that relationship of with us, what I speak of, that's through the heart, through the soul and through the beingness. It's through your beingness. So the mind is just one component of your construct. And when we get caught up in that, and it's a labyrinth, you know, and we've got to be careful not to get caught up in that labyrinth because it's a maze that can go on for a very, very long time. <laughs> and, um, when we're integrating on that soul heart base level, your whole being integrates with another being and the knowledge comes through from that integration. You merge with that. That's what it truly means to be one. We hear a lot about the oneness that's being bouncing around. Oh, it's all one and it's, you know, everybody's blissing out. It's all beautiful. The majority of that is just collective hive mind versions of oneness. So what it really truly means to be one with life means your being integrates with that other expression of life and you feel it, you understand what it's like to be that other expression of life. And the interesting thing is the more you do that, you more realise that oh, I've already been that, I've done that in this universe and oh, that expression of life there, actually, yeah, I've done that too. So the memory comes back of having walked in those shoes, of having traversed through that landscape and living out those expressions of life in this universe because really the reality of what Earth is all about is kind of the completion part of our big journey through this universal cosmic matrix construct. So bringing it back now to Mother Earth and her multi-dimensions, we have um, a being who is multi-dimensional just like you are. So let's say, for example, we look at Mason. Mason has his earthly personality interface, the ego construct we know as Mason, but that is just his earthly personality. That's the ego construct. Like for me, it's George. You know me as George. I'm communicating to you through that interface, the ego construct of George, but I'm a multidimensional being. And when I connect with Mason, I acknowledge Mason, the earthly personality, that ego construct, but then I go into my heart and my soul and I go beyond the mind because that's where the ego construct resides and I merge into his beingness and I experience this most magnificent multidimensional being that has done so much in this universe that carries incredible wisdom and, and a wealth of experience and resources. He's truly a dynamic being. So therefore, I'm experiencing other aspects of his being. Now, the Mason construct carries distortions in it. The George construct carries distortions in it. Your personality constructs, yes, you who's listening, carry distortions in your earthly ego. Now, the same applies to the planet. 
what we have is a planetary being who is a multidimensional being, but really this level that we experience, this is her distorted planetary ego construct. And the easiest way to understand that is if you truly like, okay, on the surface, nature is beautiful, absolutely stunningly beautiful. The artwork of Father, Son and Mother Earth and all of nature that goes on, truly beautiful. However, <laughs> you need to look a little bit deeper. And so this expression of the natural environment, there is nothing out there that does not kill in order to live. And I'll hear people saying, oh, but plants don't kill. Well, yes, they do. They consume nutrients. They consume minerals. They consume microorganisms. They consume. Everything consumes. And all of life is living. The mineral kingdom is living. It's not like it's a, it's a dead, inanimate object. It is a living being. And trees are living beings. Animals are living beings. And everything out there kills because that is the way this reality has been constructed. So for Mother Earth to facilitate a human race, which is the paramount life form on the planet, because that's the way it was designed, we needed an ecosystem that was going to facilitate the experiences we needed to have as a human race. So for us to become consumeristic in our ways, we actually needed to be immersed in an environment that facilitates consumerism. Now, this is the reality of the reality we live in. I'm not saying anything silly. I'm just telling it how it is. And to really understand that about my, this expression of Mother Earth, we need to get past our ideological blocks that we have because we're all caught up, and that includes me, includes Mason, and we're really working through this stuff. Everybody in this world is caught up in mind control, which is, comes in the forms of ideologies. Now, we need to get back in touch with reality. And Mother Earth, in other vibrational fields, which I have personally experienced myself, has realities which everything is totally harmonious. Now, if we go back in time and we go back to the era known as Mu, before it was called Lemuria, when I had a life in Mu, we were one with the natural environment. Nothing, because the, the planet was in a different vibrational field. Nothing consumed anything. All plants, all flora, all mineral kingdoms, all animal kingdoms, the whole lot, everything lived in harmony with one another and we were pure light energy. So we did not need to consume anything in order to live. We were already living as light. Then the vibrational field of the planet started to change. Uh, the natural environment was infiltrated uh, through various means, which um, I won't go into today. And then there was the distortion began to happen, the distortion in the human race, the distortion in the natural environment, and it was a symbiotic process of these distortion fields coming in and changing everything. Then all of a sudden animals started killing other animals and humans started consuming uh, plants and animals and vice versa. And the whole thing just turned into a quagmire. And what's happened is we are now at the point in time where this distortion field, also known as the, for us as humans, we know it as a distorted ego construct. We are transmuting that. We are transcending that. And funny enough, we just so happen to be in a symbiotic relationship with our mother planet. And she too is doing the same thing. So as we do it, she does it, and as she does it, we do it. And the whole reality and us, we're all changing symbiotically at the same time. Wow, that's a really powerful. It's just a really, generally, it's just a very powerful conversation. And it, it brings up something I see quite often in the community in where people will look back at the past, um, say, in those, those times that you were talking about um, before there was um, distortion in place, or say other people will do it back to like hunter-gatherer times before we had the ind industrialization of our planet and somewhat glorify it and work. And I can say like personally, as well as what I've observed in a way that's stressful to the system, being super attached to going back 
to the way something was. How do well, you how do you the approach big one, this? Yeah, and and you know, and the big one at the moment is uh, what I didn't say about that distortion field that entered Mu at that time, and you know, we ended up calling it Lemuria. That was when the Atlanteans came to the Earth, and the Atlanteans were the uh, the group. Uh, it, it, they belonged to an extraterrestrial empire, and and just. I've just got to say this, okay? If anybody thinks we're alone in this universe, you've really got to ask yourself why you've been brainwashed into thinking that way. It is absolutely absurd to think that we are alone in this universe because that's definitely not the case. And the evidence is all around you, but you just need to snap out of it and just see it. And then you'll see it. It's everywhere. So I'm sorry if I'm just sounding a little bit rude and condescending, but I really have to just... I can't tolerate it anymore. This is just absurd. So the universe is totally full of life and we are integrated with that energy completely in our society. And the Atlantean Empire came with their technology and the distortion field, once that empire became corrupt on the earth, then started, it entered through that, that empire and then into the natural environment. And what at the moment we have on the planet is everybody wants to go back to Atlantis. It's like that empire wants to resurrect itself. So Atlantis is, is the resurrection of Atlantis on this planet at the moment is the, um, the primary focus for the powers that want to be. However, I'm more aligned with the natural order, you know, just doing things with life beyond the need for technology. And yes, we're speaking to each other at the moment through this artificial intelligence. Um, but, you know, right now we are kind of still a little bit limited in our abilities to communicate with one another. Uh, so we still have the need for this technology. However, we are changing. We are metamorphosizing. And our ability to communicate with one another is coming back. So it's only a matter of time. And, you know, once we start getting back into that conscious aware relationship with our mother planet, back to that understanding of our multidimensionality, her multidimensionality, we're going to start really tapping into that natural order. And the distinction between the, the other, what I call the synthetic order that's imposing itself here, and the natural order becomes very clear. And it's kind of like, well, you can walk between those walls for a little while, but eventually you're going to have to make a decision as to which way you want to go. Yeah, it's really powerful and it, and it's empowering as well because the choice really is with us. And I, I, that correlates to a lot of what I talk about, I guess, in terms of um, the toxic mimics that we often interact with within our culture uh, versus the uh, the real thing. And so I, I get a real quick couple of examples of those that people might be able to really very quickly tangibly relate to is say you got the toxic mimic of tobacco in which there are you know cigarettes that we we everyone everyone knows of um they're touted as being the cause of cancer and gangrene and blindness and but what what happens at that point we start to interact and have that distort we're having a distorted reality because as humans we're actually trying to have an actual relationship with the plant that is tobacco, which hasn't been taken and industrialized yet. So we're over here having a, a relationship with, say, the toxic mimic or the distortion, the synthetic that you talk of. And at that same time, it's like we got this like lack of, because, because we think we're having a relationship with the real thing, it stresses, us, it stresses out and it polarizes us against the plant, it polarizes us against the planet, and most of all, it polarizes us against our instincts because we aren't going to be attracted to something um, in, in a very general sense or addicted to something when it's going to kill us. But that's what we're told with, say, things like cigarettes. You know, you're attracted to something that's killing you. But if we were allowed to have a real relationship with the actual plant, grow the plant, you know, have a smoke in the way that the, um, the, the real shamans were doing, then we're actually getting back to that natural order. Does that correlate? Completely. Completely. Because, you know, there's real plant medicine. There's water medicine. You know, I swim in the ocean. And the medicine I experience from the ocean is stunningly beautiful. Uh, I connect with the lady of the sea, uh, the man of the sea. The, the ocean is a living being unto itself. So the collective consciousness and the collective, you know, beyond consciousness into the collective soul essence of the ocean 
you know, it's, it's such a beautiful experience. And when somebody, you can sit down and you can smoke natural tobacco, the real plant, the real being that hasn't been hybridized or genetically modified, well, then you're entering into a relationship with a being that's how old? Ancient, hundreds of millions of years old. It's one of the oldest plants. Um, and then you're also journeying through time. And the wisdom that that being, I mean, think of all the plants of that, expressions of that plant that have existed, individual expressions of that, of that group soul that has existed on this planet for hundreds of millions of years. When you sit down and you, with intention, with, with honesty, integrate with that being, it can share so much of the knowledge and the wisdom of that it's experienced over hundreds of millions of years in this world. See, this is what we're missing out on. This is what I'm trying to awaken people to remember. This is remembrance. I'm actually not teaching anyone anything new. And I always say that. I'm just helping you to remember how we are naturally and how life is naturally. And it's so, there's so much love because we are so integrated on a soul level when we merge and we integrate with all these expressions of life. The love that runs, that weaves between all of us, is the magnitude is it's unspeakable. And therefore, the knowledge and wisdom we're able to tap into, it's, it's, a, it's a wealth of resources within your own being and through the integrative process with all these other beings. I just find it so exciting, Mason. Mm, and excitement is very healthy, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> and adventure. Yeah, can you, because I, I talk a lot about adventure and and stepping upon the advent, going on the adventure and the journey um, in your life and towards health and activating health. Can you speak to that phenomena of adventure a little bit? Yeah, look, the, you know, I, I had a really big experience and I was able to reintegrate with my soul and therefore that's the part of us that's one with the real creator of this universe. And then I was able to merge with my infinite nature beyond this universe. And uh, and I know I'm going some serious woo territory for a lot of people, but this is normal. You you we can there's other people that have done it and you can do it too. And you're in the process of doing it, okay? So Please don't judge me as much as you, your ego might or your belief system might want to. This is perfectly normal. It's fun. It's exciting because you're reintegrating with the magnitude of your beingness and the magnitude of life and we're busting out of this prison system we've been in for so long. So the what it does is that the one thing I, okay, because I've got a million things going through through my system at once here, so much to share. Um the one thing I acknowledged, sensed, and, and really came to, to feel was when I was connected, and I still am, um, to my infinite nature, and beyond this universe out there in the infinite realm of life, the one flavour or one of the unifying fields, it's kind of, it just runs through everything, is the sense of adventure. And I absolutely love that about life because from our infinite nature, we just want to create universes and we want to go into them and we want to have fun. And then we go and create another one and we go in there and we experience and it's like life really is one giant adventure park. And it also, bringing it back to grounding it here on the earth plane into your human vessel, that sense of adventure in, in, initiates, activates, ignites the child-like innocence of wanting to have fun. And it creates a resonant field that runs through your body. So yesterday I went, I went to uh, the beach and it was really, really windy, but I just so had to get in that water. It was calling me really strongly. And there's some turbulent energies around in my life at the moment. And when I went into that water, it was really turbulent. And then I stood on the edge of that water, and the moment my toes touched that water, the ocean spoke to me and said, do you understand now why I called you in today? And I went, oh, yeah. 
this is this is exactly the turbulence I have before me that you're expressing before me is similar to the turbulence in some areas of my life that I need to address. So I'm going to go into that water now, but how am I going to approach it? This is the key issue to all of us approaching, whether they're health issues, whether they're mental issues, mental health issues, emotional health issues, it's all health issues. How are you going to approach these distortion fields and 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 that turbulence and those storms, because distortions are really uh, energy having a bit of a stormy sort of fit. And I went into that water and I had so much fun. And I got knocked about and I got dumped and it was one of the wildest body surfing experiences I've ever had in my life. But I enjoyed every moment of it. And I came out of there and I basically stumbled back to the car. But I had so much fun. And I didn't enter with fear, with bitterness, with anger, resentment, insecurities, you know, fear of drowning or anything like that. I just, my whole approach was fun and adventure and the outcome was great and it taught me how to approach the challenges I have in my life, that it's just so easy to get caught up in all those drama vortexes. So we just need to have a different approach. Then we transmute and transcend those drama vortexes very, very quickly uh, once we have a whole different approach to them. Yeah, and I do, that's such a critical piece. Uh, when you when you do engage with that adventurous spirit that is just, I, I can feel it innately within myself and I can feel the community feeling that more and more and more. The, the excitement really does just bypass that drama. And when I reflect on the times when I've been the sickest, when, when I, my hormones have been thrown out and I've had uh, various fungal infections, it really has been when there's been an excess of drama. And I kind of mm. see that drama has been like, it's like a, it's a stop to stagnation. And as soon as I kind of like stop and root down in a place and pout my lips and, you know, start like, you know, like really like not allowing my emotions to have an actual passage, I just kind of like jam them in and stew in them. That's when I've really stopped the momentum of life and I've stopped Correct. the momentum of my life. I've, I've, I've completely unplugged that sense of adventure because I just feel momentum and adventure and just entwined. And at that point, it's like, it, I, I just couldn't see, I, it was just too much fog and I couldn't see. And, and I've really started to witness as I've got back into the adventure, I'm starting to let go of those dramas more and more and more, realize that I'm interacting, whether it's a human, a plant, the ocean, whatever it is, really interacting with that, you know, the living beingness of that, that, that person or that thing that's in front of me, the drama just washes away, right? You know, it's not, I don't need to use any practices or processes or techniques and then the adventure comes the momentum happens and when there's movement within my life and my body the health is just organically rising up out of me and this is something actually I was I was wondering where this was going to go in a question to you but here it comes <laughs> What I what I experience is, and which is what I absolutely love about these conversations where I'm able to have about health, is the health has emerged from within me. It wasn't yes. something that got slapped on. Do you know what I mean? Exactly, because people go, it, it's kind of like you're continuing just to focus on the symptoms. <laughs> so you notice that people get caught on this treadmill of just um, dealing with one thing after another. It's just, you know, or a repeat. It's, it's something that's just, it's a repeat loop pattern, repeating programs, repeating patterns in their lives. So once you get down into the deeper sense of, hey, I'm having this awesome relationship with this amazing, amazing woman that's given so much of herself, like really, when you really start to look at who she is and what she's done for you, Wow, you know, that is so phenomenal. Were there tears involved for me? Absolutely, because there's, there is a part of her that's in a lot of pain. However, there's the, the majority of her, she is just loving you, supporting you. She's saying, come on, let's see you thrive. You know, I'm holding the space for you to, to be challenged so you can be, you can thrive, you can understand the wisdom that you need to understand, you can process, you can transmute. So you become empowered and you can thrive. And that health, that inner health, that it's like a, a tsunami that rises from deep within. When you finally get it, when it lands, boom, 
oh, the realisation hits. It's that famous light bulb moment. It's a proverbial penny dropping. It's, it's just whatever expression you want to use. It, for, we just come into being. And Mason is a living example of that. He, it just oozes out of him. He wants to be vibrant. He wants to be healthy. And he has helped me, ah, oh, I, I, there's no words to say how much Ma Mason has actually helped me to understand that because I've got these larger concepts, but I wasn't quite bringing them into alignment with my body, with my health. And then once I cross paths with Mason, bang, it all just fell into place. So he's a living example of that where we are vibrant, we, are, we have buoyancy in our lives, and we have this health that emanates from deep within and with that sense of adventure, with the understanding of our cosmic environment, with the understanding of our journey through this reality and the benefits of it, it creates this massive alignment in your body and your body responds. It responds to the superfoods. It responds to the, to the um, tonics and, and the, the benefits of it. The, the immune system just amplifies like crazy and your body just starts healing itself so powerfully and it really talks to you it really lets you know and it's like well you know sometimes little georgie wants his ice cream right <laughs> so when little georgie goes and has his ice cream sometimes he doesn't have the best kind of ice cream and if i don't have really an ice cream that my body's really happy with it's more the ego child insecure child sort of construct that wants that particular ice cream then my body says, you know what, that wasn't such a good idea after all. And I really feel the effects of that. So my body becomes this amazing barometer for my life as well. So my relationship with my body has gone to such new levels because when I'm getting up early in the morning and I'm also experiencing that sunlight, my circadian rhythms are just, in, you know, you get in that bioresonance with life and everything is birthing in that early morning sunrise. And every cell in my body comes to life. And I'm experiencing the, the chi, the life force, just birthing in everything around me. It's just an amazing experience. So your body, and, and also your body can tell you the feeling, the sensations you get, different parts of your body will tell you what's going on with the energies around you. If you're in the presence of somebody that's trying to vampire your energy, um, you've got other people that, you know, on the face, they will look like they're being really nice to you, but on another level, they've got an alternative motor, motive and agenda. So your body becomes this amazing antenna and barometer. And when you're in a really healthy relationship with it, you know, you really exist in this reality in a completely different state of being that you did before. So if I'm going to go for a swim, I just don't just grab my keys, get in the car and go for a swim. I tell my body, come on, body. Like you've you got a pet dog or you've got a friend, you go, come on, let's go. I do the same with my body. I go, come on, we're going to go. And the moment you do that, you're in a conscious, aware relationship with your body, your body responds instantly. There's a vibrational field of alignment. So when I'm going to have that tonic in the morning that Mason so wonderfully has helped me formulate and create, then I am, am approaching that with love, with gratitude, and I'm, my body gets excited every morning now to have that tonic because it's loving it. And then it lets me know too, oh, you know, I've had enough of, say, chaga for now. I just want to break from chaga. Let's, let's go to Rishi for a little while because I just need a bit of Rishi. And I'm like, okay, let's do that. And so when I listen to that, all of a sudden, bang, it, it's, it goes to another level again. And then after a while, okay, that's enough for Rishi now. Let's go back to Chaga for a little bit. So when you really listen to your body, it'll tell you exactly what you need. It's an amazing experience. And an empowering experience, right? Uh, thanks for sharing that, George, and thank you very much for the acknowledgement. It's very humbling. Um, I just want to point out something I really like of the way that you approach the work that you do is, you, you've, and you've cited it a couple of times, like you're not – you're not really teaching anything that people don't already know. And I, again, I find that very empowering because a lot of the time I, with my experience in the community, 
we're bumping up against various beliefs, rigid beliefs, whether they're ones that we've accumulated newly or whether they, they emerge from ideology, from our past or whatever it is. And we get very attached to that belief. And I might share a belief with that person, but that person doesn't share my belief. And, and it gets very fractured once again. And I've really enjoyed the process of bypassing that, that rigidity and attachment to beliefs. And I I use the word belief very lightly now. And what's very, very nice is just for me to kind of go into that place like, right, yeah, like you use the word remembering. That's the only way to describe it. And again, it needs to be approached in a very slippery way. Like when we've had, when I know when I've had conversations with you around the, the bigger nature of the universe, such things that we've spoken about today, part of me, you know, I took what you were saying, of course, and then going, all right, well, how does that feel within myself? And parts of the information and lots of the information, lots of the awareness of those things, it sparked something of a remembering within me. And the barometer for that within my body was excitement and adventure. That, that's yeah. been a phenomenal distinction for myself. Yeah, that's, that's what happens. It's not just a mental thing. People, you don't just think about something. It's, it's like because you bring into alignment your heart, your soul, your body, your emotional body, your mental body, they come into alignment. And what happens is in the past we've just been thinking on an intellectual level. So we've just been functioning in that arena of the mind and, you know, with ego construct because that's its environment. And, and now what happens is we're going beyond that and with everything harmonised, once again, the heart, the soul, the body, the emotional body, the mental body, and you can call it a spiritual body if you like, add add that to the equation. When this alignment takes place, it's your beingness that is integrating with everyone and everything around you. So when someone shares a piece of information or you pick up a book or you just read something online, when I read something online, I approach it with my whole beingness. I'm not just reading it into my mind and processing it on an intellectual level. Do you get what I'm saying? And with that whole approach of your entire being now experiencing those words or that energy, then that is a fantastic barometer for discernment, which is best for you. What is best for your soul path in this journey? Because there's things that I'm doing and I'm headed in a particular direction but it's not in someone's soul journey's best interest to go where I'm going. I I say to people, nobody has to go where I'm going. (laughs) Like I know where I'm going, but nobody has to go where I'm going Um, because I love everyone unconditionally. So I want everybody to go where they need to go and be what they need to be. Um, I may not feel the resonance with certain expressions because I understand that they are toxic mimics, but however... The reason I understand the toxic mimics is because I've already ventured, I ventured into that territory and I, and I traverse that landscape and I've come out of there. So I don't want to go back there. But for someone who hasn't gone in there, it is in their best interest and they're going to be attracted to it and they're going to want to defend that and they want to go, and want to go in there. Do you get where I'm coming from? So horses for courses, as they say, and everybody's on their own journey and there's no rule right and wrong at the end of the day. Um, Though the toxic mimic thing, I think that is one of the best uh, descriptive labels I have ever, ever heard. And the problem with the toxic mimic is that it's getting really clever. And when it comes to energies and energetic patterns and what have you and and substances and processes and and creative processes, um, you know, we're talking about a universe that's been around for a really, really, really long time. And so the toxic mimics... Are very clever and so because I talked about earlier about the distortion field in the natural environment where everything's consuming everything it's really important that we also discern be- between certain plant species out there that actually don't have your best interest at heart so we mustn't be blindly naive or in an ideology that all of nature out there is good it's kind of like well if you go just strolling around in the plains of Africa 
it's not going to be too long before a pack of hyenas or a pack of lions are going to come and take you out. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's like there's – where I used to live in the southern Flinders Ranges in South Australia, when I walked close to one of these ants' nests, they poured out of the holes and they went for me. It was unbelievable <laughs> to see that happen. If you just lay down on the ground out there, they'll eat you. They, they just don't care. They, they just want to – consume what they want to consume. So there's an aspect to nature that we have to be aware of. It's not all peaches and roses and fairy floss and we're not all, you know, burping butterflies and farting rainbows. It's not like that. That we, we, We've got to get a grip on reality and it's the other dimensional realms where everything is in harmony. But this level here, things are not in harmony and we've just got to be not naive about life. We've got to be realistic. Yeah, so, George... I- Again, like, you know, in going into this next question that I want to ask, I, I want to kind of bring up, you know, we've said it a couple of times, like, personally, like, I really kind of like, I don't really give a crap what everyone believes. And I like it's and, and that comes from a place of just acknowledging that, you know, what I feel into my body and I feel the journey that I'm having in this life, my past the journey I've had through the universe up until this point, it's so unique and it's <laughs> so mine to be, I'm the only one that can be in the direct perception of that. Therefore, that's kind of what shatters the whole belief thing. And so, in what, what I want to talk about is in this, a conversation I had with you a while ago, which, you know, it wasn't an aha moment. It wasn't like, a, oh, wow, what you're saying sounds so good and resonates with me it just got me smiling and was I was just like oh yeah I can feel that within myself and I love it and that was kind of the one where I was bypassing you know I've been in the health community a little bit and you know dabbling in the spiritual community maybe like possibly a little bit of the pseudo spiritual community as I'd relate to it now there's this whole like putting up on a pedestal of the earth or the universe as something that is grander than me or greater than me, more powerful infinitely. And that's it. And I couldn't, I, and, and you know, after I had this conversation, I felt like, yeah, I've been kind of carrying around this like, this like irky feeling around that about like, now what's the deal with this thing I've been told my whole life that there's something there that's greater than me and it'll always be greater than me. And I just, it just never sat right. So I think you might know where I'm, where I'm going towards, but can you speak to that, that the nature of the, the, maybe firstly that we are infinite and kind of go beyond that above and below state that is perpetuated via our cultural ideologies, especially in relation to the universe. Yeah. Wow. That's a massive, massive, um, very important, very substantial topic you've just raised. Um, that's what I'm here this to do. Is the key to sovereignty, what you have just raised. It is the core essence of my work and it is the core message that brings self-empowerment um, and autonomy. You see, there's an agenda to diminish the human race and there are many ideologies, spiritual concepts, paradigms being disseminated, well, and have been for thousands and thousands of years to brainwash and diminish the human race. The reality is when I said that, you know, coming full circle now, right, from when we first entered, opened our discussion, not discussion, we actually entered into a conversation, not conversation, a conversation. Um... We began to talk, I touched on the infinite nature of my being. Well, what does that mean? And what is the end result of embodying that? Well, what it does is it blows all conventional paradigms out of my system because I am infinite. Now, here's the kicker. <laughs> when, when, remember earlier I told you about Synthetic law, L-A-W, and natural law, L-R-E. When I reintegrated with my soul, I also 
in that moment that's symbiotically reintegrated with the creator of this universe, the natural one, not any other entity that's claiming to be. Yes, the universe is an intelligent being. However, the joy of that being and the joy that that being was sharing with me and expressing to me that I was also integrating with my infinite nature beyond its universal expression. See, the real creator of this universe knows that it is expressing itself as this universe and that it also has its infinite aspect. So we actually exist beyond this entire universal creation. And the real creator of this universe is happy to remind you of that, not that you need reminding when you integrate with your soul because it's a natural byproduct. It's a, it's a natural part of the process to remember. And what it means is, are you ready for this? <laughs> what it means is it, I'm truly infinite. Um, I've never been created. I always have been and I always will be. There's no beginning to me and there's no end to me. I've never been created. I'm talking about my beingness now. So that answers so much and that explains so much and that reveals so incredibly much and exposes all of your belief systems and all of the paradigms that are trying to diminish you and control you because that is reality. You are infinite. There is nothing beyond you. Like you've really got to get a grasp of what it means to be infinite. And the moment you start reintegrating through your soul back to your infinite nature, you start to embody that infinite nature. You're anchoring it. You're bring it in and your body just ignites with joy because all of a sudden it is releasing itself from all those programs of limitation, from all those programs of being diminished as though you are lesser than, as though you're subservient to some higher authority. No, in the nature of life, in the infinite nature of the isness of life beyond this universal creation, we are in harmonious co-creative process together. This is how no one is better than anybody else. Nothing, the, the reality is nothing exists beyond you. I'm no greater than you and you are no greater than me. We are both infinite together. There's no beginning to us and there's no end to us. There's no one anything. There's no totality of anything out there. There is no one being who is the creator of all. It's not how life is. It's infinite. It's open-ended. No beginning to it, no end to it. So your body goes through this incredible ignition of sovereignty, of autonomy, this release from the prison it's been in, the vibrational patterns, because you know, we've incarnated in bloodlines that have been marinating in this crap for millennia, right? <laughs> the genetic imprint in your body, it reacts and all of a sudden you come alive. It's such a beautiful, beautiful feeling. I love it, George, and I appreciate you going there. <laughs> the whole intention here is to cut through the crap and have the real conversations that are going to actually bring the real empowerment to people's lives, real empowerment and transformation around people's health. And we don't dance around anything. We kind of like really want to have that con conversation. No, co-verse. Co-versation. I'll be... Yeah, because we're verses... And, and we are co-versing. So you've got your verse. You're singing your song of life. I'm singing my song of life. And together we co-verse. We create a harmony. We create symphony with all our individual songs of life. And that is the beauty of it. And we understand the sun and, and the light that's emanating from that sun is a symphony of all the light of all the stars in this galaxy combined into a unified expression. I mean, I could really go on with this, but... I know we've got to pull it up, but just 
giving little people some little tidbits there. I love it. I don't mind if we go a little long, and I'm sure everyone else wouldn't either. And and you just saying that, talking about that verse and that song that comes to us, it reminds me the uh, Indigenous and some Aborigine friends here in Australia have told me um, after they've somewhat been washed away by what we maybe call uh, um, a synthetic culture and been um, been swallowed up by it, and when they start to step back onto the land and come back to themselves, they begin to remember their song. And they remember their dance. And that has a yes. lot of relativity towards what we've been talking about today. George, this has been absolutely incredible. I have loved every minute of speaking with you today. Could you please just give us um, a website or a way that um, people listening could um, get in touch with you or check out the work that you do and especially the book that you wrote? Okay. The website is ourjourneyhome.com. Dot au, and the book is called Our Universal Journey. So I remembered my journey through this universe and was therefore able to remember a lot of the structure of the universe. Not every single fine detail, but it's, you know, how do you put all that down on paper? You can't. So it, it provides a real triggering of awakening for people. Uh, it's been fun. And also, uh, if anybody would like a private session, if you go to the website, then you know, click on mentoring. And there's workshops coming up. And Mace, you and I, we're going to do a workshop together. Is that right? That's right. I momentarily <laughs> forgot about that. That would have been a good one to tune into before we had this call. <laughs> It's definitely it's it, there is definitely a, um, a workshop that we're going to be doing together. It's been we're going to be coming up in January, I believe, um, up in Byron Bay. So you can either jump on George's newsletter or my newsletter over at masonjtaylor.com to be informed as soon as the date is secured. That's going to be rocking. Jeez, I hadn't even I didn't even remember that for this call. Oh, there's so much energy bouncing around, Mason. It's no surprise you did it, man. It's all good, <laughs> mate. So many thanks. I um, am very grateful for the work that you're doing, um, for the health that you embody and for coming on and um, really giving everyone the opportunity to really experience what your journey has been like thus far and therefore be able to take that and into their own experience, embody it, continue to unify it with themselves and enchant their lives. You know, this stuff, it ripples out into the work that you do, um, the your career, your relationships, your direct relationships and absolutely your health on every level. So, I hope you have loved the conversation as much as I have. And George, I will be seeing you real soon. Thanks, Mason. And my love and appreciation to everybody who's listened to this as well. Thank you so much. So there you have it, everybody. My interview with George Cavasilis. Big concepts, yet so simple and with absolutely incredible, incredible implications on us having the capacity just to ease our spirit, (laughs) calm it down, just be like, right, okay, yeah, that's right, I remember, I remember what's going on here. And I, you know, you get a little bit more of that clarity I've found anyway, like, that's right, you know, just touching on obviously that that conversation of who are we, what's going on here, it's always going to remain very mysterious and and, uh, I hope you got some clear distinctions um not not for you like not ne- not necessarily information that you can then go yeah yeah that, that information i'm going to take and i'm going to use that information to describe you know myself and my journey but rather just some key uh distinctions via the conversation that just help you touch those parts of yourself for you to really feel deep into yourself and and get to you know ease back home within you and as you as you do that a lot of the a lot of the tension gets to roll off um, a lot of tension through through the what the Taoists call your shen your spirit which lives in your heart and ultimately you know at that point nervous system gets a big break you know you just get to ease back into that parasympathetic nervous system that place that that more of that yin place within you where your body can really restore and heal and regenerate itself so i very very much recommend that you head over to george's website ourjourneyhome.com.au he has some very beautiful resources on there and if you want to dive deeper into his work um check out his book 
check in. It's a, it's a really, it's a really incredible book. And, um, you'll find that on his website as well. Likewise, if you want to tune in about the, uh, event that George and I will be running in, uh, around Byron Bay in Australia next year, early next year, head over to my website, masonjtaylor.com and sign up for the newsletter and you will stay up to date on that. Please, please subscribe to this podcast so that every Monday you'll have an episode pop in there so you can continue to delve into this world of multidimensional health, empower yourself, access the vitality and energy and harmony that's already in there. And I really, really do appreciate if you could rate the podcast over on iTunes and leave me an, a review. It really, really helps me to know how how it's um, impacting you, how it's landing, and I can continue to refine and, and ensure that this remains a, uh, a podcast that is, stays relevant for you to ground in this concept of health into your life so you can access all those parts of you, like we can access as a community, all those parts of us that we know are our birthright so we can just continue along this adventure of life with a skip in our step and a song in our heart. So I really appreciate that. I appreciate you all. And until next time, stay enchanted. <laughs>